Now, first of all, I think this is the first thing here. If you own less than 20%, which means you neither have any control or you have any significant influence over the operations of the company, and therefore, and therefore, you must use fair value method. You must use fair value method. Fair value method. If you own more than 20%, if you own more than 20%, if you own more than 20%, you would use equity method. You would use equity method. And if you own more than 50%, if you own more than 50%, which means you have control, that means you own more than 50% of the company, you decide who the board of directors will be, you decide all the major decisions of the company, you will consolidate. You will consolidate. Now, Everyone here, right? You must ask me one question. I have mentioned here more than 20%, you have equity method, more than 50%, you have consolidation. How does it really work? How does it really work? More than 20%, I said, fair equity method, more than 50% consolidation. So throughout the year, let's just say in a company where you own 60%, in a company where you own 60%, throughout the year, just one second. Throughout the year, in the company where you own 60%, let's just say in a company where you own 60%, throughout the year, in the books of parents, you will follow equity method. Only for year end, on a worksheet, or in the separate books, you'll prepare consolidated financial statements. Year two, again, you will use equity method for the parents' books throughout the year. Only on the year end, you'll prepare consolidated financial statements. Year three, again, you would use equity method because you're owning more than 20%, 60% you will use equity method for the parents' books. Only on year end, you'll present consolidated financial statements. So are you getting the idea what happens here? Consolidation is done on worksheet only. It's not done on the parents' books, not done on the parents' books or subsidiaries' books. It's only for presentation purposes. So the books of parents will follow equity method forever. The books of subsidiary, obviously the subsidy, if the, the owners, if the parent owns the subsidiary, the owners of the ownership of the parent is shown in the equity section. So the investment is made by the parent. The parent will show in its own books under equity method throughout the year. The subsidiary will have its normal regular books only for year end presentation purposes. In a separate book, a presentation or consolidated financial statements will be created. And this is done according to the economic entity principle. See, think about it. Economic entity principle is we look at it as one economic entity, regardless of the form. Parent and subsidiary can be two legal entities. But if you see, parent owns more than 50% of subsidiary, parent controls a subsidiary. In essence, they are one single economic entity and therefore they should be consolidated. That's the logic. That's the accounting principle we are following here. Tell me if you're clear with this very fundamental difference. Only if you're clear with this, you'll be able to understand what we're doing next. It's very, very crucial to how the next entire consolidation happens. We'll have a lot of journal entries coming in, but before that, tell me if you're clear with this. Tara, clear. What about the rest of you guys, if I can have a response on this? So let's just take it right now. Parent company owns 60% of subsidiary company. For year one, year two, year three, your four years. During the year, in the books of parent, how will the investment be accounted for? How will the investment be accounted for? Under what method? During the year, how will the investment be accounted for and under what method? Sarah, equity, what about the rest of you guys? Diana, equity method. 
equity method during the year equity method during the year in the books of pay correct in the books of subsidiary has subsidiary made an investment or parent made the investment has subsidiary made the investment or has parent made the investment parent guys i want you all to be 100% focused here this is a very very important topic everything we discuss even though it might be repetitive now will add up to your proper understanding of the consolidation topic and for that it's important for the next let's say 2 3 weeks whatever we are here for right for consolidation specifically for the next two classes this class and the next class you give your 100% attention trust me you'll be clear with one of the most important topics which lot of us struggle with so subsidiary hasn't made the investment the parent has made the investment now subsidiary had other shareholders now parent is one of the shareholders for subsidiary there is no accounting no accounting extra no additional accounting but because parent owns more than 50% of subsidiary even though parent and subsidiary are separate legal entities they are the same economic entity economic entity and therefore only for year end only for year end they will present in a separate worksheet consolidated financial statement every year every year so their regular books will not be affected regular books will not be affected this is only for presentation purposes books will not be affected this is only for presentation purposes so in essence if you see in essence if you see if you have an investment in equity shares of another company you are following only two methods either cost method or the fair value method if your ownership is less than 20% and the moment your ownership is more than 20% we will use equity method that's it however if your ownership happens to be more than 50 you will also consolidate at the year end that's the exact language i'll repeat it again i want to make sure we are all 100% clear with this for investment in equity securities prima facie there are only two methods we follow fair value method for investment less than 20% if it's more than 20% and you have significant influence we follow equity method and if it's also more than 50% if it's also more than 50% then only for year end we will present consolidated financial statements in addition to the regular financial statements that's how the consolidation works now all subsidiaries must be consolidated all the subsidiaries you have where you have more than when i say subsidiary it means more than 50% all subsidiaries must be consolidated unless there is a significant doubt whether the parent can control the subsidiary if there is a doubt that the parent cannot control the subsidiary then you don't or if subsidiary is in bankruptcy because if the subsidiary is in bankruptcy what happens is the trust the, the court will appoint a bankruptcy trustee the trustee will have the control over the subsidiary the parent will not have legal reorganization or under foreign restrictions there is a bankruptcy in a foreign court so if you are in bankruptcy then you will not be if the subsidiary is in bankruptcy then the subsidiary will not be consolidated now if you go to the last video i had done i hadn't put in these theoretical points the reason i'm putting it now is because you might get one of the theoretical questions here which of the following subsidiaries will be consolidated they'll give you 10 subsidiaries two will be in bankruptcy the one which is in bankruptcy or legal reorganization or foreign restrictions will not be consolidated very very simple
Now, what if, what if the parent year end is not equal to the subsidiary's year end? For example, parent is having December 31 year end and subsidiary is having June 30. They are having different year ends. Now, in this case, consolidation becomes difficult. It becomes difficult, right? How do you consolidate? They are for different periods. I want to make sure the financial statements are the same period. Now, if you see the year end difference is more than three months, it's more than three months, right? June for subsidiary, December for parent, that's July, August, September, October, six months difference is there. So what subsidiary will have to do is, will have to prepare special financial statements. Regular books, subsidiary can have 30th June, but they will also prepare special financial statements, which corresponds to the parents' financial statements year end. That's what subsidiary will have to do because the difference in year end is more than three months. If it was less than three months, if it was less than three months, let's just say parent had 31st December and subsidiary had, let's just say 30th November. In that case, parent will use subsidiary's regular financial statements. So parent will use up till November itself. However, for any significant events, which has happened during the gap period. So between November and December, whatever significant events have happened, parent will adjust for that. So subsidiary will not be making special financial statements. Parent will use subsidiary's regular financial statements while making, whilst making adjustments for any material transactions during the gap period. Are we clear what happens when the year end is different? If I can have a response from everyone here on this, what will happen if the year end is different? Now, let's talk about vertical ownership, right? I'll explain it here. If A owns 50% of B, and B owns 50% of C, so first B and C will be consolidated. B and C will be consolidated, right? And then what B and C will be consolidated and then A, B and C will be consolidated. We will start from the bottom list she. Because B owns 50% of C, first you will consolidate it B and C and then you'll consolidate A with B and C. That's how vertical consolidation works. If you have multiple lineages in the, in the consolidation. Now, let's start with the interesting stuff. Let's start with accounting for it. Now, this is accounting for acquisition. When you purchase the investment, when you purchase the investment, how do you account for it? This is in the books of parents. This is in the books of parents. which is following equity method because you're purchasing the investment. We are accounting for purchase. We are not accounting for consolidation. We are not doing consolidation yet. We are accounting for parents. So let's just say investment in subsidiary will come in. Investment in subsidiary will come in, in the parents' books. Now to purchase this investment, parent might have issued cash. Cash will also come in. Cash will also come in. To purchase this investment, parent might have issued stock that will bring in common stock and additional paid in capital. That will bring in common stock and additional paid in capital. That will bring in common stock and additional paid in capital. 